Well, the hay mower has been going for three solid days now. I just finished mowing the last of mine and dad just started raking the first of the hay that was mowed. It's all laying on the ground now. We got to get it all picked up before the next rain. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. Well, I'm doing something I've never done before and I didn't expect to be doing right now. I am cultivating corn. We have a field that had a hybrid last year that actually dropped some ears. A fair amount of ears fell off and a lot of those ears began to grow at the same time as the corn that we planted began to grow. And that's called volunteer corn, meaning we didn't plant it, it just kind of volunteered to grow. I've had people say, why would you try to knock down this corn that's between the rows because isn't that just more corn for free? Well, no, it's really not because it's planted so densely together and the roots are so shallow that it's not going to actually even make an ear. All it's going to do is be in the way of the good corn that we planted and cause it to maybe not make an ear because it's going to take all the moisture and sunlight and it's basically robbing nutrients and, and water away from the corn that we planted. It's kind of acting just like a bunch of weeds. We don't actually own a cultivator anymore. It's been a long time since since we've cultivated. Like I said, I personally have never cultivated corn before. So we are renting this cultivator and the little tractor that it's hooked onto from a neighbor. Obviously, we're not able to take out the volunteer corn that's actually kind of in the row. There's really nothing we can do about that. But anyway, we're gonna clean it up as best we can. Like I say, fortunately, it's just some small areas like this, but it definitely needs to be done. Well, I got the cultivator dropped back off, caught a ride back. Now I'm in town with my pickup and my cousin's flatbed trailer, the skid loader on the trailer. We just hooked the uh, tractor and the baler and the wagon together. We're gonna do some square baling. The round baler guy just finished here, so we're really hoping that we are left with the about the appropriate amount of hay that we wanna square bale because we've only got these two big wagons. So we're hoping it fills them, but we're hoping it's not too much to fit in. So here we go, let's see what happens, I guess. fun to be the people bringing the wagon to the baler than it is to be the guy throwing the bales on the wagon, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you doing over there, Andrew? Are you YouTubing? No. Huh? 
it seems that we've got problems here. That doesn't sound the best. The other problem we have is we've got too much hay. The hay that's left in the field here is not gonna fit on this last wagon, so I'm gonna have to have the round baler guy come back here on his way by and finish the rest of it. I guess that's a good problem to have. Well, we're getting after it now. We even got one up on the hitch. I'm sure one of you is gonna yell at me for that, but we're strapping the back ones on at least. It is really nice to be able to leave the skid loader back at the haystack and leave the tractor out in the field. That way we can just run the trailer back and forth and it saves us a lot of time. Once in a while, when you try to pick up a round bale, you end up picking up the skid loader instead of the bale. But we make do with what we've got. Well, we had a really good day yesterday, got a lot done. I'm just getting ready to hop in the tractor and go rake the last of my hay so we can put this baling situation in the books. Let's go get it done. Well, the raking's done. It's back to picking up bales. I don't have a uh, truck driver today, so I'm walking a lot. There's the truck and trailer down there. There's the tractor and the rest of the bales down there. And here I am walking from one to the other. It's good for me though. It's really good for me. It's just what I need, some exercise. Everything rattles in the 1995 F-350. I don't know where the sounds are coming from, but everything rattles in the cab. I guess you might say it's the Freightliner of pickups. This is 100% DOT approved, isn't it? Right? I mean, look at how that, since I set the bale over top of the other bale, it locks everything together and nothing could go anywhere. It's perfect. Take a look at the color of this lawn. We are in desperate, desperate need of rain. We're in a severe drought right now and it's starting to sprinkle and it looks like we might actually get some measurable rainfall today. That would be amazing. Guys, I know it's super bright, but I really need to show you something. What could be better than this? We got an inch and three quarters. An inch and three quarters, does that mean the drought's over? No, but that means we will survive another week or two until we can get another couple inches. Uh, and there's even a chance of rain later this week again. So thank the Lord we are still growing things for now. Hey, we just had a great daddy-daughter date tonight. Every kid dreams of this, going to a farm meeting with their dad, right Kaylee? Mm, 
Okay, maybe not every kid. Lots of cool precision planting stuff on display tonight at this shop up in Arlington, Iowa. We got to see a lot of neat stuff. A lot of the stuff that they were displaying, we already have on our planter, but one thing that we don't have is called speed tube. And I wanna show you what that looks like. This is pretty cool. Take a look at it. This actually replaces the seed tube that takes the seed from the meter down to the ground and sticks it in the furrow. And instead of just using gravity for the seed to slide down the tube, this actually has a motor and a belt. What it's able to do is keep the seed spaced out properly all the way down the tube. In a gravity tube, the seed can ricochet on the walls of the tube and screw up the spacing on the way down. But once the seed drops into its spot on the belt, the belt carries it down, the seed comes out the bottom of the speed tube, and then it shoots it out the back of the tube at the same speed that you're moving this way so that the seed essentially hits the furrow at zero speed instead of dropping out at five miles an hour and rolling in the furrow like it can with a regular seed tube. These are pretty cool. You know, that really does bring back memories. I remember going to farm meetings with dad all the time and he was just having the time of his life talking to everybody and looking at stuff and I was just bored out of my gourd. Man, how the tables have turned. Hey, I'm gonna drop a couple of links for you in the description down here below the video. If you are at all considering trading planters or upgrading your planter, you'll wanna check this out. There's some really sweet rebate programs going on throughout the rest of the summer. Now is the time to do your planter stuff. You don't wanna wait until spring when it's too late to get the parts and too late to get the things done that you wanna do. Go ahead and do it now while you can get some great rebates. It really adds up. Hey, sorry it's been so long between videos. My nights have just been insane the last couple of weeks and that's when I have time to edit, is at night after everybody else is in bed. So I apologize, I was hoping to get this out last week, but here it is this week. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I have. Thanks for riding along with me this week. I'll see you next time. Most planting seasons have weather challenges that make it difficult to plant all your fields in ideal conditions. SpeedTube is a seed delivery system that allows you to double your planting speed without sacrificing performance. You'll have a sense of accomplishment when the rain comes and your planter is already back in the shed. Contact your local precision planting dealer today.